destiny or covenant relationships. Hmm. What are these relationships? They are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime. For as long as you are alive, those relationships should remain. And these are the relationships that you should pay any price under God to maintain. Because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships. Is God speaking to someone? An example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your parents. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your children, and then your relationship with strategic friends, connections, mentors that God brings to your life. War betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships. You may never be able to actualize destiny. I want to say something respectfully speaking. When you see people in old age, isolated, frustrated, with no help whatsoever, some of them will give excuses like, I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. I'm sorry, but I disagree. It does not take education to invest in relationships. It takes honor, discernment, and humility. How can God give you a gift of 40 years, 30 years, 50 years, and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny? You must be a dangerous person then. Someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say, I believe in you and I see you an advantage to my life. This place is quiet. I'm sure God is speaking to you now. Because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships. Some of you, that classmate you met is not just a classmate. There is something connected to destiny. For some of you, this ministry that God brought you is not just an option just because you are looking. It is destiny connection. Now, let me show you what happens when we do not discern destiny relationships. Are you ready? Genesis 13. Let's continue from where we left off. We'll start from verse 7. Remember the story. God called Abraham and lot went with him god prospered abraham and god prospered lot who went with him but something started happening pay attention to my message now the spirit of god is speaking there was a strife between the headmen of abraham of adam's cattle of abraham's cattle and the headmen of lot's cattle can you imagine both the one who carried the promise and the covenant and the one who followed became so blessed. But with every blessing and with every lifting, there are always issues. The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, and Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, it's not the whole land before thee. Separate yourself. Ah. Now there is a problem. You know what Abraham was telling Lot? It seems like now you don't even know why God bless you. Because you followed me, you partook of the grace upon my life. Now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people to know why God blessed them. That it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing. Let there be no strife. Go. He said, separate yourself. You never allow this to happen over destiny relationships. This may happen for general relationships. 
this may happen for seasonal relationships but when it has to do with destiny relationships swallow your pride because we are about to learn a lesson from lot now are you ready please give it to us separate yourself abraham told lot i pray thee from me if thou will take the left hand i will go to the right or if thou will depart to the right i will take the left abraham was telling him it does not matter the location what is on me will sort me out but you choose any direction and go now watch the foolishness of lot which is the foolishness of many people on earth today god has brought you to this camp to give you wisdom for destiny the bible says and lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan that it was well watered where before the lord destroyed sodom and gomorrah even as the garden of the lord like the garden of eden as thou comest unto zoar hey then lord shows him all the plain of jordan and lord journeyed east and they separated themselves one from the other now follow carefully abraham dwelt in the land of canaan where did lord go to help me lord dwelt in the city of the plain and pitched his tent towards sodom this is what separation from destiny relationships can bring the first decision that lord will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in sodom can i tell you this there are relationships god brought you to because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships what happened to your father will still happen to you god brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men this is true lot went unfortunately to sodom question by the time abraham came to rescue lot where did he find lot he did not find him at the gate of sodom lot had moved in moved in and he was at the center of sodom even though he remained a righteous man but there was still trouble because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted you will still suffer it is someone learning god connected you to a friend that friend was the one who helps you pray that friend was the one who helps you fast every time you are backsliding god will show that friend in a dream and you say my brother i had this dream i just noticed that is, is there something wrong with your spiritual life let me tell you what satan does to people when he wants to destroy them please look up and learn the first thing satan does when he wants to attack your destiny is to look for everybody who can help you when you are down he will create trouble between you and them so that all of them will leave you when you are alone in pride he will now attack you because anybody who can help you there is no peace between you for the rescue this is how people die and this is how people are destroyed satan will never attack you when he knows you are surrounded by destiny relationships the first thing he will do is to surround you with wrong people or take away good people from your life lord would have said abraham i know there is strife between my people and your people please let me talk to them i can't let you go because i remember what i was and where i was before god brought me to you i believe it's a destiny connection my apologies let me work on it only god knows what else would have learned about lot destiny relationships there are doors today that have been opened in my life to my life as a person and in ministry because of destiny strategic 
destiny relationships and by the privilege of god's grace god has used me through destiny connections to also open doors for others many of you here respectfully are about to get crash your life because you don't have value for anybody you have a narrative in your life i don't need anybody to hell with you you can go be careful who you are driving away from your life you may drive one man that is equal to the next 10 years of your peace go and find out what happened to the disciples when they ran away from jesus jesus is not the kind of person you run away from but they ran away and within 72 hours their whole life scattered peter that was gaining relevance in 72 hours peter went back to fishing and was wasting his time there when jesus came in john 21 he said little children have you any catch he didn't even know it was jesus he said cast your net to the right side when he casted his net as soon as jesus returned to his life in one statement he caught fish that he had been struggling and he did not catch is someone learning before i continue please lay your hand on your head and say lord give me the discernment to know the relationships that my destiny depend on lay your hands on your head and pray grant me that grace so that i don't use foolishness or pride or lack of discernment and destroy valuable relationships that can hold the key to many 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 chapters of my life hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly i'll read a scripture and i will show you how to maintain destiny relationships and will be done genesis 21 For someone when your life changes and people ask you you will tell them i came for this student congress and i found something i found a key hallelujah now for sake of time i will save you a lot of details genesis 21 let's start from verse 8. this was a story between abraham and his wife sarah and a maid called hagar the mother of ishmael please follow very carefully let's start from verse 8. now speaking about remember when sarah could not bear a child are we together now abraham now had a child with hagar and the bible says something that hagar was sarah's maid but the moment she had a child and she saw that she was now in a position of advantage something began to happen she started mocking and acting funny towards sarah and in anger sarah banished her and said go abraham said you can do with her whatever you want so this is a story you are about to learn verse 8 very quickly and the child grew and was weaned and abraham made a feast the same day that isaac was weaned uh-huh and sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, now God had given her her own, which was born unto Abraham. He said, wherefore, she said unto Abraham, verse 10, cast out this born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac, verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now watch this. And God said to Abraham, let not it be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the born woman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for Isaac shall be thy seed, shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He says, and also the son of the born woman 
I will make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Watch this now. And took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar. Putting it on her shoulder and the child. Uh -huh, and sent her away. And she departed and did what? Wandered in the wilderness. She came to that house as a maid. By reason of all that happened, regardless what happened, God lifted her and sorted her. Now she separated and wandered around the wilderness, even to Beersheba. Next verse. The Bible says, And when the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, uh -huh, and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept now the lesson begins and god heard the voice of the lad and the angel of god called to hagar out of heaven and said what ailed thee hagar fear not for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Now watch this. He said, arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand. For I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Next verse. And the Bible says, and God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and he became an archer. And he dwelt in all of that, and all of that. Now, when you read that scripture, let me tell you what I'm trying to pull out. The Bible said something very instructive. That both Hagar and the baby, two of them were crying. But the Bible says, when God heard, he had only the voice of the baby. The Bible never said he had the voice of Sarah, of um, Hagar. How come she was crying and the baby was crying and only the voice of one child went to heaven? You know why? Because even though she was in rebellion, she had left her maid. That baby that came out of her was still connected to that blessing by covenant. And because of that covenant... God could not deny the child, even though the mother of the child was in rebellion. He cried, she cried. God only had the voice of one child. Notice, God did not even say anything to solve her problem. Why are you crying? Hold the child, I want to speak about the child. And that's it. How can I be crying? And a baby is crying. And God hears the, the cry of the child. And comes and acts as if I am not there. Gave her water. And now focus on speaking about the child. Because she was connected to Abraham. This is very powerful. 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 